Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah What a day it was yesterday Alhamdulillah me, Ali, Hijab and a couple of cameramen We went to the BBC studios, the Israeli embassy Elbit, the uh, major arms supplier to Israel And also we passed by a Jewish area as well and stopped by for a little chat So yeah, mashallah, it was a really productive day We might be able to release some of that footage inshallah So stay tuned for that As I'm sure you guys appreciate, the Palestinian situation is quite clear for anybody with a conscience and half a brain cell. 66 children have been killed, 52,000 have been displaced, 132 buildings completely destroyed, including hospitals and other integral and important buildings. I mean, no sane person in their mind can possibly defend this. (laughs) And that's the reason why you've got groups like Amnesty International, who have categorically and very clearly condemned the aggression and violence of Israel. You've even got their own human rights groups like Bit Taslim who have also condemned them. So naturally because Israel's on the back foot, they are buying adverts on TikTok, buying adverts on YouTube, maligning anyone and everyone who speaks out as anti-Semitic, especially if they have a big following. But this needs to be made clear. Criticism of Israel and its government is not anti-semitism. Yeah! Just like with any other country and government, you should be able to criticize them and you can criticize them. It's not linked to the religion. Criticism of a country like Pakistan or Saudi Arabia is not going to be linked with criticism of Islam. Criticism of India and Modi does not mean that you are Hindu phobic. Yeah, or anti-Hindu. So on Saturday, the New York Times approved an advert to be printed in their newspapers in which Dua Lipa and the Hadid sisters were being demonized and maligned Say what? for standing up against the atrocities taking place in Palestine. The advert was paid by Rabbi Shmuley's organization and it read Bella, Gigi and Dua. Hamas calls for a second Holocaust Condemn them now. And they went on to accuse the mega influencers of vilifying the Jewish state. All these three celebrities are guilty of is standing up in solidarity for families that have lost their loved ones. Yeah, standing up for a group of people that don't have a voice and giving them their voice. For standing up against oppression. Yeah, that is internationally recognized by human rights organizations, the United Nations and the likes. They haven't said anything about the Jewish people. They haven't made this a Jewish issue, even though if they did, there shouldn't necessarily be anything wrong with that. But it seems that each any time you say something, oh no, you're an anti-Semite. But here they're not even saying anything against them and yet they're still being labeled with that slur. It's a slur. So let's have a look at this Rabbi Shmuley bloke. Yeah, he's no regular individual. He's quite known on American television. Our next guest is the colorful Jewish rabbi and author who's been a confidant of Michael Jackson and Roseanne Barr and has even given Oprah plenty of advice. But what I want to know is how you and Pammy become colleagues? Well, you know, she, she and I actually connected over Israel because uh, she's a supporter of Israel. And when we go to his organization's page, of which he is the founder, here's the first post you come across. As you can see, the three celebrities are being maligned, lied against and demonized with words like terror, Hamas influencer brigades, hatred, anti-Semitism and the likes. Yeah, absolutely appalling. Dua Lipa has since responded to this defamatory piece that was published by New York Times. And this was a highlight for me. Of course, you can read the whole thing yourself. She goes, this is the price you pay for defending Palestinian human rights against the Israeli government whose actions in Palestine, both Human Rights Watch and the Israeli human rights group Bit Taslim accuse of persecution and discrimination. You go girl. I think she's hit the nail right on the head. And I have to rate celebrities like this because we all know the materialistic society that we're living in. Yeah, and how you've got people and handlers around these celebrities that tell them 
do this, don't do that, this will be good for your image, that will be bad for your image and the likes. Yeah. So for them not to speak out about these issues and just go about the status quo, toe the line, they're going to carry on getting their gigs, carry on getting the money, not being mentioned as anti-Semitic and the likes. So that's the easy option for them. For them to speak out knowing that it can affect their career, knowing they're going to be in the media, knowing that it's just going to be a headache, getting with their PR guys and just seeing how they can, you know, defend themselves and stuff like that. Much respect to them. Yeah, much respect for putting their celebrity hood because let's face it, these individuals, that's pretty much all they've known. Yeah, so to put that to the side, yeah, put that in limbo and speak out against the oppressed, it does take a lot of guts. Of course, you can see that Israel is losing the battle. That's why they're resorting to, you know what, I think calling people that aren't anti-Semitic, anti-Semitic is anti-Semitic. So what you're doing is you're normalizing the misuse of that term for people who are actually victims of it. So yeah guys, keep posting. You're seeing that this is bugging them. Yeah, in fact, Bella Hadid, she was being responded by Israel's official Twitter handle and they were calling her an anti-Semite just for saying a few lines of poetry. Yeah, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. And they said, oh no, she's saying that Israelis and Jewish people, no, they didn't say Israelis, she's saying Jewish people should be thrown into the sea. Wow, <laughs> look how desperate they're becoming. So keep sharing the videos, Yeah, keep raising awareness. So guys, keep doing whatever's in your power, whatever's in your control. Remember, the consequence or the result is in the hands of Allah. This is merely a test for us to see if we will do whatever is in our capacity. Yeah, Allah is not going to ask you, oh, why did this deal get done with that country? Because you're, you're not sitting in the political arena. What you do have control over, social media, going to marches, you're educating yourself, whatever it may be, you do that, inshallah. I speak to myself if I speak to you. Until next time, guys. Assalamu alaikum.